this is the church that's making the difference in people's lives. <clears throat> and we are no better than any other fellowship. We just come together in love and we put Jesus first and we keep him first <clears throat> and we give him all the glory, honor, and praise. Let's try some of this lemon tea, clear the throat, clear the pipes out today. Preacher might have to preach today, so, so a lemon tea, do your part. Well, bless God. Hallelujah. I hope you all had a great week. Jackie and I, we've had a wonderful week. We're just praising God. We're just rejoicing in the Lord and thanking God for all his great and mighty works. Somebody says, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let me ask Ryan Trogler if we're being received well. Can you hear us well, Ryan? Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear, Pastor. Hey, Ryan, thank you, man. I love to hear that. I love the fact that you hear us loud and clear. We're going to ask you uh, to come on in a few minutes and, and lead us into prayer. Would you please, sir, at, at, when I call you back? Amen. Will do. All right. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, I want to just uh, mention to you that we have a brand new website up. And um, I activated it this past week, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. I think I'll put that in the chat window, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com incorporated.com and that will bless you that will bless you look on that website check it out you'll get um, um, a heads up on what's happening in the ministry where we're going what we're doing included in this website is uh, the announcement of our new back to basic school of ministry well it's not new we started this about oh about mm, eight years ago but we put it on hold we put this on hold while I helped Pastor Paul Begley to build up the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. Now the Lord says now it's time to get back and to uh, build up the Back to Basic School of Ministry also. So we minister mainly to a lot of people in foreign nations. We have provided uh, teachings and classes for people all over Africa, all over the Caribbean, Caribbean the Caribbean. The Jamaicans will be graduating about 150 people in October. We'll be going there for that graduation. And uh, we have several people throughout the United States who are graduates of the Back to Basics School of Ministry, which is the forerunner of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. Oh, no, I'm not leaving the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. I promised Pastor Paul a certain number of years. We're going to build up that school. Next year, Paul Begley School of Prophecy will be fully accredited. And the Back to Basics School will be fully accredited this year. I'm waiting to hear from the accrediting corporation uh, agency to let us know that we are fully accredited. So starting in September, we're going to be offering uh, a bachelor's degree and working towards uh, the master's degree and the doctorate degree. We will be fully accredited, ladies and gentlemen. That means everyone who started with our school back in I think it was 2010 when we first started, 2012, all who received degrees, their degrees will be uh, honored as being degrees from an, a bona fide accredited school. And so we praise God for that. And also, uh, we're, we're reaching out to people who uh, uh, don't have a whole lot of money to pay for school but want to go to school. And we, we this is the school that is, I think, the lowest price school of any that I know. And so I'm going to be continue to be the dean of the Paul Begley School, but we're also going to build up our own back to basic school of ministry and offer uh, <clears throat> the associate degree, the bachelor's degree, uh, the master's degree, and the doctorate degree. And it will cost a person less than what they pay for any other school in the nation. So pretty much for that. That God will get the glory. 
out of all of this, we praise God. Also, in our new website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, and um, we want to ask you as you come on to mute your phone, please. Uh, all all listeners, please mute your phone and 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 uh, let's um, silence whatever the background is. Thank you, because we are recording. We're recording. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you that you're on with us. Just mute your phone for 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 season. Also visit our Back to Basics Ministries Inc. dot com website to learn about. Um, the online church. We're, we're, we're advertising about the online church so that more people can come on the online church and get blessed just as you are. So tell people to go on to this website, see what's happening with the, the, the new school of ministry, the online church. And ladies and gentlemen, here is something really, really good. Well, all of it's good. We have another page about uh, nationwide Bible study. Yes, nationwide Bible study. We're announcing the development of our nationwide Bible study to begin in September, the first Wednesday in September, September 4th. We are um, developing, and I'll be hosting the nationwide Bible study in which we're going to take people through the Bible. We're going to teach them about the Bible, what the Bible says not what the Republicans say, not what the Democrats say, not what the Independents say, not what Mama says, not what Grandmama says. We're going to look at what God says in His Word. And the beautiful thing about the Nationwide Bible Study is that it's free. It won't cost anybody anything. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we want the nation to know, and the nations, because it will be international also. There's no excuse for not knowing your Bible. There's no excuse... We're providing Bible teachings that are free, won't cost anybody anything. The only thing, if people want to take this uh, for credit, we work out a credit arrangement that they can get credit with the uh, Back to Basic School of Ministry. So these are exciting new things as the Lord is opening, enlarging our territory. Jackie Fisher, God is enlarging our territory so that we can reach more people and share the gospel with, with them um, so that we can... Get them into worship on the online church and, and, and that the online church, we stand in the gap until people can get into a brick and mortar church because we want people to fellowship and, 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 and serve in their local neighborhood where they can help people. And so the online church is, is a key instrument in helping people to, to become prepared for service in the brick and mortar church. Then we're looking at developing a school where where people who can't you know may not have the money can't really afford school but uh the the cost for the back to basics online back to basics uh school of ministry is so low that anybody anybody can matriculate if you really want to go to school if you really want to learn we will make arrangements that you can learn. If you're serious enough, now if you're not serious, don't waste our time. But if you're serious about learning and, and studying, you see, God said in his word, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge of him. And I commend those of you who are uh, our current students in, in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. Many of you will be developing your own schools in, in the future. You'll be teaching courses, and I'm going to be asking some of you to help us teach courses in the Back to Basics School of Ministry. And so we praise God for you. We thank God for you. We work together. We want to commit ourselves to working with other ministries to build up the body of Christ and get that word out because these are the last days and people's lives are at stake. Not only their lives, but their souls. So once again, Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Back to Basics Online Church. I pray that God is blessing you and your family in a mighty way. He's blessing us here in Latonia, Georgia. He's moving nationwide and worldwide. And so we're going to uh, have a great message today. Our message today is what happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church? What happened? And, and you say, well, I know what happened. The Holy Ghost came. Well, we're going to look at about 15 other things, 14 or 15. I'm going 
I may not get to that many today, but I have a list. I have a list of about 15 things that happened. I've got the list, 15 things that happened when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the church. We might cover about maybe five or six, maybe ten, and uh, uh, I can get the rest of you of that to you uh, in an email. But we're going to look at the exciting things that happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. Let's ask Ryan Trugler from Pennsylvania to lead us in prayer. Come on, pray with Ryan. Uh, good morning again, Pastor. Good morning again, Church. Excuse me. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for breathing the breath of life into us again. Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross, shedding your blood for all of our sins, and rising up out of that tomb because it couldn't hold you down. <clears throat> Lord, we want you to come down and uh, give Pastor Carter the wisdom and knowledge to teach us your word again today. And, Lord, we also want you to come down here and lay your hands on the sick, restore people's souls, let them see what miracles you have done for, for other people, and let them see what you can do. And Lord, we just want to give you all the praise. And, Lord, we just want to say we love you, praise you, glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And give our love to Miss Tara and Miss Jenna. And God bless your household. Praise God. We thank God. I want to welcome our granddaughter, Joaquina, from Delaware. Joaquina is on with us today. Hey, Kina. God bless you, girl. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Come on and unmute your phone and say hello to your grandma. Oh, hi. I miss you, too. Can you hey, hear me? Hey, I miss you, too. I love you. I love and you, too. We're going to see you in August, okay? Oh, good. We'll be up that way yeah. in August, okay? So we'll be talking with you. Uh, give your sister happy birthday greetings from us, and we'll talk with you later on, okay? Okay, thank you. All I will right. do that. Praise God. Praise God. It's so good to know that family supports this ministry, and this ministry is blessing family. Terry, Jeep in, Jeep in. Uh, Colorado. Jeep says she's excited about this Bible study. Hey, Jeep, come on and say hello to us. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very much looking forward to the Bible study. Wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. And you're a great Bible teacher, and, and, and we believe this will help you in what you're doing. All right? Yes. Hey, Jeep, this will be an opportunity for people to ask questions that they wanted to ask and get the, the knowledge they've been looking for and that we can interact. Um, we're, we're trusting God to give us an agenda that's going to cover a lot of the current issues of the day and what the Bible <clears throat> has to say about them. Not what the prophets have to say, not what the preachers are saying, not what the politicians are saying. But well, we want to look at, hey, what's God's take on this? What is God saying? Because when the deal goes down, it's what the Word of God says. And so uh, we thank God. Jackie Fisher says it's very much needed. Praise God. Jackie Fisher, come on and say hello to us, would you please? Yes, good morning, Pastor Carter, and good morning, Church. I am really excited about this Bible study that will we'll be um, seen in September. I can't wait for it. Praise God. Praise God, Jackie. Praise God, and uh, we're we're going to be building up a cadre of teachers. We're going to have Dr. Jean Bratton from Wilmington, Delaware. She's an assistant with the Back to Basics Ministries, and um, Dr. Jean is an awesome teacher. We're going to have Miss Jackie Carter doing some teaching. We're going to uh, uh, be bringing a Pastor Paul Bakley on and and others to do some powerful teaching. And I've got, a, I've got a list of some students, and Jackie Fisher, I, I think I see your name on my list. We're going to uh, uh, try to get you, get Ryan, get some others, Jeep, and uh, to do some teaching. But we want to lay a good foundation of the Bible for America and for the nations. Uh, it hurts my heart to hear God crying out from uh, the Scripture, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And... and, and Jackie, it hurts my heart even more, Jackie, when I see the number of people who claim they're saved but don't study the Word. 
They don't study the word. Jackie Fisher, how can you say you're saved and you don't study the word? You don't read the word of God. You don't know anything about the Bible. Well, if you're saved or you know people who are, are, have gotten saved and, and want to know the word of God, have them uh, to be on the lookout for the Back to Basics Nationwide Bible Study to begin September 4th and every uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and it's free. It won't cost people anything. So this way, people will have no excuse for being ignorant of the Bible. There will be no excuse. Okay, so thank you, Jackie Fisher. Thank you, Jeep. Thank you, Jeep. Thanks for uh, all who are all with us. Uh, Zisla down in Texas. Uh, come on and say hello to us, Zisla. Hello, Pastor Carter. You know, today is a beautiful day, so a wonderful day to hear God's word in your class today, or in uh, today's church. Praise God. Thank you, Zisla. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, and so I see uh, uh, we'll be talking to you again, uh, Zizla. I see Anonymous is on. Anonymous, uh, that's my son, Wes. Hey, Wes, come on, say hello to your dad and the people. Good morning. God bless everyone. Hopefully everyone's having a great start to the day and the week. And be blessed. Look forward to hearing the word. All right, praise God, praise God. Hey, that's Wes, that's Kena's daddy. You all heard from Kena a few minutes ago, Joaquina, and so that's her dad. And so, praise God. We're family, everybody. We're family. I love you, you love me, and we're, we stick together as family. We may live in different places. Uh, we may have different backgrounds, but we are family. We're in the body of Christ. And so, let's turn uh, in our Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And um, we want to look at in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 13. 1 through 13. Uh, uh, I want to ask Jackie Fisher if she'll read these, these, these verses. Jackie Fisher. And Jackie, when you get down to verses 9 and 10, you get some pretty tough words there, but if you need any help, uh, I don't think you will, but I'm here to back you up on them. Could you read that scripture for us? Everybody listen carefully to the word as Jackie Fisher uh, reads the word uh, for us. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Uh, okay, Acts 2, 1 through 13, the gift yes. of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem beyond them, oh, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamp... I can't say that one. Pamphylia? Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, round about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, 
Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was Jackie Fisher reading for us, ladies and gentlemen, and she read so excellently. And we thank God for this word. And uh, praise God. Thank God we just bless you and honor you and praise you for the reading of your word and that we've heard your word and, and the record of what happened uh, on the day of Pentecost. And so, God, we ask that you guide us in this message today as we share with uh, your people what happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church. You know, uh, and we ask this in Jesus' name, Lord. You know, I... A lot of people, if you uh, tell them, hey, I want to talk about what happened on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church, they will say, oh, man, I don't want to hear that. I want to, I want to watch the Atlanta Braves or the Phillies or the Cubs, or I want to watch golf, or, or, or man, uh, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to do that. But, you know, we need, to, we need to take time out and hear the Word of God. We need to find out who God is, learn about Jesus. Learn about him experientially, meaning experience him for ourselves. Because the time is coming when, when people will not want uh, to hear the word and will not be able to hear the word. I'm so excited that my granddaughter's on, and and uh, a lot of people talk about this young generation. But well, there are young people like Kena who are excited about Jesus hungry for Jesus, know that they need Jesus in their lives, and I thank God that this ministry ministers to the whole family. Ryan Trogler, his whole family is on when we, we, we minister. Jackie Fisher's family is on, and uh, uh, when Christy Carpenter can come on from up in Idaho, their whole family is on. Speaking of Christy Carpenter, praise God, we have a praise report. Her husband uh, her husband Aaron broke his back last week, and uh, the the prognosis was that Aaron would be laid up for eight weeks, and and uh, and 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 it'd be a long recovery. And Christy uh, sent me a message, and you know we prayed for Aaron last Sunday on the Back to Basics online church, and so Christy gave me a message. The doctor said things are looking good. He's only going to be laid up for two weeks. He'll be back on his feet in two weeks. We say hallelujah. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. That's because God is God. And God heard our prayers as we prayed for our brother who had been uh, hurt in an accident. And so God cares about every one of us. We say hallelujah and praise God. God continue to bless Aaron and Christy Carpenter. Help them to continue to walk in faith. And ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You just keep your trust in the Lord. No matter what the circumstances are saying, no matter what your family's saying, no matter what your friends are saying, no matter what the report is saying, no matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what the politicians are saying, keep your eyes on Jesus. And hear the word of God. I love it. I love it. God is confounding the wise. He's even confounding the doctors with his ability to heal. You were listening to the song, and the, the song, the songster was saying, uh, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. That means we can have healing. Our sins are are forgiven and we can have peace because Jesus paid for our peace and so I want to encourage you to give your heart to Jesus I want to encourage those of you who are listening and are not saved receive Jesus Christ today by faith just ask the Lord to come into your life and be your Savior Lord and God and receive him by faith thank him and then keep on worshiping him make your determination, you're going to follow the Lord for the rest of your life. And if you want to go to school, we'll help you to get in school. We'll help you with the Bible, with understanding the Bible. Praise God, because God has servants ready 
our brothers and sisters in the family. When you get born into this family, God's got people in the family who will help you to grow, who will help you, who will mentor you, who will help care for you. And so we thank God for this. We just praise God. And so we look at Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Well, Jesus had said to his disciples in the first, it's recorded in the first chapter of Acts, he said, tarry in Jerusalem. He told them, he said, I want you to go to all the world preaching the gospel to every nation. Luke wrote Luke and Acts. Luke ends the book of Luke's, Luke with the Great Commission, where Jesus commissioned uh, uh, the disciples and and said to every believer, not just those 12 who were there, but to everyone who will follow after him. He gave us a commission. It's called the Great Commission. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. If you want a, a, a real good breakdown on this commission and what it means to us in the church and the online church, order a copy of my book. I have one book called The Church and the Great Commission. I have another book called The Online Church and the Great Commission. Visit the website and you can get those books and you'll see what a powerful uh, calling God has on us. You'll see what the powerful anointing God, what his instructions are for us. These are things we ought to be doing, not just depending on some preacher to preach to you on Sunday, but these are things we are charged to do for the rest of our lives because we have a responsibility. Once we get saved, we have a responsibility to help others to get saved. Not only help them to get saved, but help them to stay saved, ladies and gentlemen. Help them to stay saved. And so in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Well, what is the day of Pentecost? When you look at, back at the Old Testament scriptures uh, in the book of Leviticus uh, and Deuteronomy, you'll see that there were certain practices, certain days, certain feast days that the Jews were required to honor. Well, the day of Pentecost was one of them. Pentecost means 50 days. 50 days. Well, it was 50 days after the crucifixion of Jesus that this day of Pentecost came. Jesus was crucified 50 days, ladies and gentlemen, before the day of Pentecost was to be celebrated. Now, in the Old Testament times, the day of Pentecost was celebrated in this manner. The high priest and the priest took holy water and they paraded down the streets and went into the tabernacle into the temple. At this time it was the temple. They paraded, and, and people were in long lines in this parade as the high priest and the priest took a pitcher of holy water, sanctified water, and, and the priest's purpose was to take that water into the temple and pour it on the altar. He, his job was to pour that water on the altar. It was Pentecost. It was a a, 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 a ritual that they had been doing since the time of Moses, celebrating the Passover and uh, um, celebrating the, 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 the first fruits, uh, the first fruits of the harvest. And so they poured a pitcher of water on the altar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the very time that the priest was, the high priest was pouring water, holy water on the altar, Jesus poured out from heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Don't miss it. At the very time that the priest, the high priest, was in the temple pouring water on the altar, Jesus in heaven from the right hand of the throne of God, he had ascended from, from, from uh, raised up from death. He ascended into heaven, and he was sitting on the right hand of the throne of God, and he fulfilled his promise to the church. He poured out the Holy Spirit upon the church. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. See it. When the priest was going through that ritual, that religious ritual, that ritual did not mean a thing anymore to the Jews. The Jews had rejected Jesus, but they kept on with their, their, their feudal, hopeless religion, going through their religious practices. But 
because they rejected Jesus, they missed their opportunity to get saved and get set free. And to this day, ladies and gentlemen, Israel is still going through their form of worship, their form of worship, still not rejecting Jesus, still not acknowledging Jesus. But the day is going to come, ladies and gentlemen, when, when the Jews are going to get the Holy Spirit. Look at what happened in the Scripture. The Bible teaches us that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, meaning the believers, the followers of Jesus, 120 of them. They were in an upper room. They had rented a room in a building. They were all together. They were there. They had been there for about a week. Uh, ten days prior, Jesus told them uh, that, that they were to tarry into, in Jerusalem. He wanted them to go into all the world to preach the gospel. But he said, tarry in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. I will pour out power upon you. Wait in Jerusalem unto the power. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are, are believers. And those of you who are going to get saved, you'll be believers. And God's got a job for every one of us. But in order for us to do what God has assigned us to do, we need power. We need power. Now, just as Jesus told the disciples, tarry ye in Jerusalem, wait for the promise. He's saying the same thing to us. We've got to wait for the power. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, people get saved and they want to be like Paul Begley. They want to be like Billy Graham. They want to be like so-and-so. They want to be like T.D. Jakes. They want to go out and build big ministry. And they have no backup. They have no power, no strength. There are people, they want to preach the gospel. They want to be a, a, a worldwide well-known prophet. They want to be able to uh, uh, do what so-and-so is doing in his ministry or her ministry. But they don't take time to study. People, ladies and gentlemen, some of the laziest people in the world are members of the body of Christ. Hey, Jackie Fisher, I'm going to say that again. Jeep, I'm going to say this again. Some of the laziest people in the world are so-called Christians. They want to do great things for God, but they don't want to study. You can't get them to crack the Bible. You can't get them to pray. You can't get them to tarry. You can't get them to wait. But they want to go out and do great works. And what they do, yes, they run out and do works. But before long, they burn themselves out. Ryan, are you listening? Before long, they burn themselves out. Why? Because they're operating on their own energy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to drive your car, your car needs gasoline. Your car needs gas. You need oil. You need energy. You need fuel. And, and even with the, the human body, if you keep running and don't feed your body, you're going to die. Your body needs to be fed. Same thing with the spirit. You cannot do spiritual things uh, using physical food. You can't uh, do spiritual things by eating oranges and drinking orange juice all day long. You can't do spiritual things by eating collard greens and potato salad and fried chicken. No, you need spiritual food, ladies and gentlemen, in order to do the work of God. And the spiritual food is studying the Word of God, praying, developing relationship with God. Join our class, Communion with God. Learn how to hear from God. There are a lot of people out there running. They're doing this. Uh, they even open churches. They start ministries. Uh, they have these great uh, grandiose schemes and, and desires and dreams, but they won't take time and humble themselves and do the first works. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem for the power. You can't do anything without the power. And ladies and gentlemen, these 120 believers, they waited for the power. They obeyed God. Hallelujah. Peter obeyed God. John obeyed God. James obeyed God. Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, Labaius, they all obeyed God. They waited. And, and waiting means that they did not sit around uh, watching uh, Steve Harvey. They didn't watch Ellen DeGeneres. They didn't watch The Price is Right. They didn't watch Jeopardy. They didn't watch uh, a sports program. They didn't watch the Golf Channel. They didn't watch the CNN News. They didn't watch TBN. They didn't watch BBC. No, 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 no. They waited. They tarried. 
tarrying means they praised the Lord together. They studied the scriptures together. They prayed for one another. They worshiped the Lord. They sang songs of praise unto the Lord. They lifted up holy hands unto the God. That's what you do when you tarry, ladies and gentlemen. You just don't put sackcloth and ashes on, throw ashes on your head and put on sackcloth and put on a long face and, let, and, and don't put any makeup on and let people think that you're holy, that you're fasting, you're, you're, it's a, the Lent season and you're fasting. No, no, that's, that's just a, an act of religion. Ladies and gentlemen, when you tarry, you wait on the Lord, but you study the Scripture, you search the Scripture, you ask God to speak to you, you praise God, you pray, you keep on praying, you trust in the Lord, you shut out all those outside things. You tell your mama, Hey, Mama, I don't want to hear it right now. No disrespect, Mama, but I want to hear from God. You tell your daddy, Hey, Dad, I love you and all that, but I'm seeking the Lord. You tell your grandmama, No, Grandmama, I can't come over to see you. I'm seeking the Lord. You tell your best friends, No, I ain't hanging out in the mall today. I need to hear from Jesus. That's what you do when you tarry, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible says, The Bible says, Because they obeyed God. They obey God. Oh, if more preachers would tarry, if more saints would tarry, if we would seek the Lord, if we would wait on him for the power, if we would trust God for the Holy Ghost, if we would trust God for his promise, Jesus made a promise to the people. He said, I will send you power. Then you can go in all the world. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do this ministry. We cannot preach. We cannot operate this ministry, Ryan. We cannot do the things God has called us to do without having the power. And the power must come from Jesus. And so at the very same time that the high priest poured out, Water on the altar in the temple. Jesus, from the throne of God, poured out the Holy Spirit. In other words, he released the Holy Spirit to come upon the believers. He released the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this had never been done before in the history of the world. That the Holy Spirit was released to fall upon the people of God and not just to fall upon them, but to indwell them. The Holy Spirit came to stay. He didn't come like in the Old Testament. Well, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon Gideon. But that was for a season. The Holy Spirit came upon Samson. That was for a season. The Holy Spirit came upon Jephthah. That was just for a season. The Holy Spirit came upon Moses. That was just for a season. The Holy Spirit came upon David. That was just for a season. The Holy Spirit came on many people in the Old Testament only for a season. But this time, this time, this time, ladies and gentlemen, this time, Robert Peary, this time God did something new. God did something new. The Holy Spirit, who is God, the third person of the Trinity, God came to dwell with the people. God came and Jesus poured the Holy Spirit out. Jesus poured God, the Holy Spirit, out upon the church, not just for a season, but to stay, to stay. Grab that word. Lay hold on that word. Appropriate that, appropriate that word, Robert Peary. God, the Holy Spirit, came to stay, to indwell us, to live in us to live in every believer. Ladies and gentlemen, you have people today crying, God, pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a futile prayer. You don't have to pray that prayer. He already has poured out his spirit upon us. The spirit lives in us. Activate the spirit, ladies and gentlemen. Activate the Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit know that you know that He lives in you. And submit your will to Him. Submit your will to Him. A lot of people have no power in their lives. The power lives inside of them. The Holy Spirit's inside of them, wanting to do great things, wanting to lead them, wanting to heal them, wanting to do great things. But the people will not acknowledge God. God said in His Word, My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, 
We are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to cry out to God again and again. Pour out your spirit upon us. He already poured it out. God ain't going to pour out his spirit anymore. Hey, Jackie Fisher, God ain't going to pour out his spirit anymore. He poured it out on the day of Pentecost. You read it for us in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, that uh, they were all in one accord in one place. Listen to the word. Verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh-oh, there came the sound. There was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. They saw fiery tongues, cloven, split tongues. That came unlit, lit on everybody's shoulder. Could have been their shoulder. Could have been their head. And set upon each of them the fiery tongues. The fiery tongues which symbolizes the purity of the fire. They were purified by the tongue, the Holy Spirit, uh, the symbol of the tongue that fell upon them. And verse 4, and they were all, listen, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of them, all 120 of them, were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now why, church? Why, church? Why, church? Hey, why, pastor? Why, bishop? Why, pope? Why do you uh, uh, preach against tongues? Why do you call tongues glossolalia? Why do you say tongues is not of the Scripture? Come on, come on, uh, church leaders, get with the Word of God. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why, Kena, that's why, Wes, that's why, Ryan, you need to study the Word for yourself. Don't depend on any preacher to teach you. You need to have a, such a relationship with God that you open your Bible and you start reading and the Holy Spirit starts teaching. You start reading and the Holy Spirit starts teaching. You can have that relationship with God. Humble yourself. Repent of your sins. Call upon the name of the Lord. Make up your mind. I'm going to have a relationship with, the God, with God, and God is going to speak to me. God is going to minister to me, and I'm going to walk in his precepts. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of them, all 120 of them, were filled with the Holy Spirit. And praise God. Praise God. Now, uh, Jackie Fisher read to us the scripture. There were dwelling in among them, Jews, devout men. These were Jews from all over the world. It was Pentecost. It was the time of the Passover. They had come from all the nations of the world. And uh, some of these nations you have never heard of, like Cappadocia, Elam, Parthians, the Medes, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, uh, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Libya, around Cyrene. Well, I heard about Libya because Simon of Cyrene was in that group. Simon of Cyrene was the black man who carried the cross of Jesus. He was in that group. He was there among the 120 who got filled with the Holy Ghost. Later on, uh, Simon went back to Africa, got his family saved, and, 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 and his family, uh, Alexander and his mother, his, his son Alexander and his wife, wound up in Jerusalem where Paul meets them and greets them in the 16th uh, chapter of the book of Romans. So ladies and gentlemen, these people waited on God for the power, for the Holy Spirit, and then they went into all the world. God's called you for a ministry, and nothing's working for you. It'll work for you if you seek the Lord and, and do things God's way. Wait for the power. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to be preaching about the Holy Ghost baptism soon, and, and I'm going to show you how the Holy Ghost baptism is different from when God poured out the Spirit upon the church. God poured out the Holy Spirit upon the church, and now with the Holy Ghost baptism, as you learn, as we teach further on, you'll learn how God specializes to meet every person's need with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're going to learn that uh, the gift of tongues uh, is, 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 is uh, uh, different. The gift of tongues that you receive when you get filled with the Holy Ghost is different from what the 120 people received on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, God took 120 people, most of them Galileans, 
most of them ignorant and unlearned men and women who had not gone to college, had not enrolled in a school of prophecy or school of ministry, and didn't know diddly squat about foreign languages, but when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began speaking in a foreign language that was strange to them, but the people in the audience, the people around Jerusalem, the people outside of that room, heard them speaking and praising God in their own languages. So ladies and gentlemen, when we go further in this ministry, and I'm going to be ministering about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and why you need the Holy Ghost baptism and the gift of tongues, we're going to teach you what the gift of tongues is for each individual, what the gift of tongues is and why tongues is important and what happens when you speak in tongues. Okay, so in this situation... At the day of Pentecost, the believers were speaking in different tongues, meaning the tongues, the languages of the then known world. Ignorant, unlearned men who did not learn these languages in school, didn't even know what they were saying. They were speaking in languages that other people understood. But when we look later on at the gift of tongues, the Holy Ghost baptism and the gift of tongues, you're going to learn that you receive from God your own prayer language with interpretation of that prayer language and what can happen when you speak in tongues and why Satan has been fighting speaking in tongues, why Satan has been fighting people getting personally baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. So we see here today how the church was baptized in the Holy Spirit. In other words, Jesus fulfilled his promise, ladies and gentlemen, and he poured out the Holy Spirit upon the church. Later, we'll talk about what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at the example of the disciples on this Pentecost experience and what they did afterwards, and then God is going to show you what you can do in the area that he's called you based on what he gives you. Now, I did announce that uh, my subject was entitled, What Happens When the Holy Spirit Was Poured Out? What happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church? So let me just give you a list of these things. Later on, if you want this list, email me or give me a call. I will send them to you. But uh, if you review the, this, 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 uh, record, this message, get the recording, you can copy them for yourself. Number one, uh, the first thing that happens, happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. The church was born. Ladies and gentlemen, the church was born. There was no church until the Holy Spirit was poured out. They were assemblers. They were people who met together. But the church was born on the day of Pentecost. Number two, Joel's prophecy. Joel 2.28 was fulfilled. Joel's prophecy was fulfilled. Joel prophesied some 400 years before Pentecost. In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon your handmaids will I pour out my spirit. On the day of Pentecost, Joel's prophecy was fulfilled. Number three, the Holy Spirit began to indwell all who received Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important thing that you need to know. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, or the moment you received, the Holy Spirit began to indwell you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. If you have truly been born again, you have confessed Jesus as your Lord, you have received Him as your Savior and Lord, then the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You may say, well, I don't feel nothing. I ain't nothing happening in my, in my life. Well, you start studying your Word. You start worshiping God. You start praying. You start getting serious about God and give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to move in your life. You'll see a difference. Number four. What happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church? The apostles received power. We're talking about dunamis, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about dunamis. That's the word where we get all the English, English uh, deriv derivative dynamite. We receive, the, re the apostles receive power. You'll get power too when you receive the Holy Spirit. Number five, the Spirit was poured out upon all flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the Spirit was poured out upon all flesh. Well, what's this mean, preacher? It means that the Spirit was poured out not only on the Jews, but on the Gentiles. You had, you had Africans in that audience. You had Asians in that audience. You had people from different countries in that audience. Uh, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. All flesh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a footnote to this. The Holy Spirit is not poured out upon sinners. You must be born again. You must receive Jesus Christ in order to receive the Holy Spirit. God's not going to pour out His Spirit upon sinners. Number six. Number six. The followers of Jesus were filled with the Holy Spirit. The followers of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. The followers then were filled with the Holy Spirit. And you see in the rest of the book of Acts, manifestations in their lives. Peter went forth and Peter uh, did great things for the Lord. Paul did great things for the Lord. Philip did great things for the Lord. And likewise, as a follower of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will do great things for the Lord. The Bible says, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, listen, let's make this plain. As a believer, the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit, He is in you and me right now. But the Bible says we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. He's not going to just push his way through your body and, and uh, work his will through your body. If you're not studying the word, you're not worshiping God. Uh, you have no, no inclination to worship and praise God or serve God. But when you want the power to be released in you, you can ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We're going to be talking about that very soon in another, in another message. Number seven, they began to speak with other tongues. They began to speak with other tongues. Now listen, we made this distinction. In, in that day, on that occasion, they began to speak the languages of the people who were in the audience, and God purposely let the audience know and the people outside know that these unlearned, these ignorant Galileans are speaking our languages. They didn't go to school to learn them. And God gave that demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit to enable the people to speak in languages that the world knew so that the world can hear the gospel and be saved. And God can use you just as you are. He can send you to Afghanistan. He can send you to Brazil. And he can use you and give you a tongue to preach in or even give you an interpreter there. And you can preach the word of God and people can be saved. It's possible because of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, they received the divine power and knowledge to establish the church. They received the divine power and knowledge to establish the church. Sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, sad to say, a lot of our brick and mortar churches, a lot of our, 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 our local churches are not, have not been established by God, have not been established by the Holy Spirit. A lot of our churches are branches where two people, two leaders couldn't get along, and so one leader left and took half of the members with them and started another church. Uh, they left uh, uh, Exodus Baptist Church, and they wanted to show themselves better than the people in Exodus, so they named themselves Greater Exodus Baptist Church. Or they left First Baptist, and they named themselves Second Baptist, or Third Baptist, or Fifth Baptist, as they have in San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of churches, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it, a lot of the churches, a lot of the denominations that are in existence today have not been established by God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are denominations, don't, they don't even believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are denominations, they do not even believe in the, the Holy Spirit. They don't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And ladies and gentlemen, there are denominations, they don't even believe in Jesus. And yet people attend them every Sunday. And think they're going to heaven. Come on now. Wake up people. Number nine. Back to number eight. Only God the Holy Spirit can establish a church. And when God moves on your heart. And he 
asked ask you to unite with so-and-so and get a group of people and establish a fellowship, that means the Holy Spirit has assigned you to that. And when the Holy Spirit assigns you to start a ministry like this online church, we don't have a whole bunch of people, but we're worldwide. We're touching people with the gospel. Hey, Jackie Fisher, we're not a large in number, but we're touching the world with the gospel. Why? Because God spoke it, and we heard his voice. And by faith, we walk by faith, and we pray, and we trust God that the Holy Spirit will build this ministry the way he wants it. We don't want a great and powerful, mighty ministry. We don't want to be known and, and acclaimed by people. We want the Lord Jesus Christ to be lifted up and proclaimed throughout the whole world. Number nine, just a few more. I've got 15 things that happened. And, and just give me five more minutes and we'll do these. Number nine, the purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was to prove to the Jews the Gentiles could become Christians. So therefore, there's no more division between Jews and Gentiles. And the folks need to stop hating on the Jews. Right now, the Jews are getting ready to retaliate against some folks over there who have been bombarding the Gaza Strip. It pays to be on Israel's side, ladies and gentlemen. There should be no separation between the Jews and the Gentiles. And spiritually, there's no separation when People receive Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. Number 10, the baptism ushered in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Remember in Jesus' first sermon, he said, the kingdom of God is at hand. And now Jesus is fulfilling that promise with the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Number 11, even though all people did not receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit became available to all who will believe in Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people in the body of Christ, they're saved, but they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet, because they're saved, the Holy Spirit lives in them, but they're not filled. Okay? And look at it. Look at your cup. You've got one, you got one ounce, of one milli, whatever, one, one, liter, uh, one liter in your bottle, and it's a five, uh, five liter jug. Well, you can get four more liters in there. It takes four more liters to fill that jug. Same thing with, the, with, the, with, the, with us as believers. We have the Holy Spirit within us, but the Holy Spirit wants to enlarge our territory. He wants to fill us with his presence. And the church needs to ask the Holy Spirit to fill. And when the Holy Spirit fills us, we've got to trust him and do what he says do. Number, thir number 11, even though... All okay, number 12. The Holy Spirit came to abide with us forever. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not come for a weekend visit. He did not come for a Sunday morning as people sit up in church on Sundays. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord, come by here. They only want God for 55 minutes. And, and if the church, if the service is longer than, than, than an hour, they're going to they're shut God off. Well, what if God come, wants to come in 61 minutes? Well, those 60-minute people have, have lost out. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit comes to stay and to live with us forever. He's inside of every one of us who are believers. You say, well, why do I get sick? Why do I have troubles? You've got the Spirit inside of you. He'll give you victory over all things. Trust Him. Number 13, the Holy Spirit was poured out to enable us to live in righteousness and holiness. Yes, we can live in righteousness. And holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the President of the United States can live in righteousness. He does not have to lie to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, why so many lies coming out of the White House? Nancy Pelosi can live in righteousness and holiness. Why does she have to spin lies? Why do the Republicans and the Democrats keep spinning lies, bombarding one another with lies? Ladies and gentlemen, it irks me. It burns me up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, inside the core of my very being, Jackie Fisher. It hurts me to hear so many of these gospel preachers calling these leaders Christians, calling them Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, you, they shall know you by your love. Everybody in leadership position from the White House to your house is not a Christian. They should know you by your love. If you're a Christian, then you, you, you cease from lying. If you're a Christian, you le cease from deception. If you're a Christian, you cease from, from deluding and, and delusion. 
You cease from these things. You cease from those negative works. Well, if you don't believe that, read Romans chapter 6. Number 14, the church age began when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Satan had no idea that the church age would come. God hid the church age from the people. Except for Daniel and Ezekiel and a few other prophets, God hid the church age. That's the age we're living in. That's why you've got to be very careful when you follow these so-called prophets. When you, when you, when you uh, uh, surround yourself with prophets and, and, and you don't read your Bible, but you're going to listen to what the prophets say. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, be wary of some of these so-called prophets. Unless they're teaching the word of God, you need to get away from them. And you need to study your word, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that what that prophet is saying is of the Lord. Well, the last one, the baptism inaugurated the new covenant. <laughs> the new covenant, ladies and gentlemen, was inaugurated with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The old covenant, the Old Testament was done away with, and the new covenant, the new covenant um, was ushered in. Well, praise God, praise God. These are 15 things that happened when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the church. I wish I had time to go on, but I'm very cognitive of your time, and I want to be true to uh, what our commitments are. We're going to end this uh, service in a moment, and then uh, keep the uh, chat window open and keep the lines open for anyone who has any questions. But remember this, on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the death of Jesus, the Lord Jesus poured out the Spirit of God upon the church. One outpouring, ladies and gentlemen, once. He poured it out once. He does not have to pour out the Spirit again. The Spirit has been poured out upon the church. And everyone who accepts Jesus receives the Holy Spirit. Everyone who accepts Jesus as Lord receives the Holy Spirit. Now it's up to you to get filled with the Holy Spirit. We'll preach about this in a def different, different message perhaps next Sunday. How to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your word to your people. Thank you for your love for all of us. Lord, we bless you and praise you and honor you. You are the Holy One. You are the mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and honor you and praise you, Lord, for your wonderful works. There is none other like you, Lord God. There is no other like you. God, we bless you and honor you. Now bless your people. Meet every need they have. Draw us nigh unto you, Lord God. Help us to study, to show ourselves approved unto you. Help us to worship you, Lord God. And until we meet again, keep us, we pray. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. By the way, before we end the recording, if you are, have listened to this message, and you want to be saved, you can be saved. Uh, if, if, if you want me to lead you to the Lord, or you want someone to lead you to the Lord, just give us an email and, uh, or send us a text message. 404-205-1101. We'll call you back. But you can receive the Lord now by faith by asking the Lord to, to save you. Uh, repeat this prayer after me and you will be saved according to the Scripture. This prayer is, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and you raised him from the dead. I want Jesus to come and live in me and be my Savior and Lord. I receive him now by faith and I thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation and eternal life. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, get in touch with us. We'll show you the next step. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen.